a little bit more. There we go. All right. Hopefully that's live. Yeah, it's live. All right. Let's get in there. Let's bring up that. How you all going? Ianapolis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my video. I'm painting live this morning and I just need to get the video up so I can see your comments as we go along in this live, okay? Uh, what do I do? I click on there. I'll take the volume down when it gets on there. Boom, okay. See how we go. All right, there's that, there's that. Uh, Grayscales, g'day, how you going, Anthony? Glad to see you here. I'm up early this morning, it's nine o'clock here. Now this has got to go onto that other screen over there. I don't know if you can see that, but I've got to move it over there from one computer to the next. I don't know if you can notice, I've got a sheet of glass clipped to that, so I saw me paint splatter, don't go on me, um, uh, Laptop. Now I've got to bring the mouse back over to this one. The things you've got to do. And then I can bring up my reference picture, which is there. I don't need that. I thought I was going to use the lonely screen to monitor my camera, but this is alive, so I don't need that. Um, my picture, there we go. Put it on full screen. I'm going to bring you over and show you that in a minute. So I'm going to write the um, colours that I use in the description below and there'll be a few links down there once I've finished filming this so if you're watching the replay the links are in the description below there's about nine of them there um, quite a few to knock yourself out with all right got our brushes ready and I've got my paints that I'm pretty sure I'm going to need uh, here we go I've been busy cutting up my old bottles they're all in the bin there as you can see trying to get every ounce of paint out of them I hate waste and paint, so I've got them all out. And good thing about this, the lid can come off and you can put all the leftover paint from old bottles in there. So that's what I was doing the other day. All right, and this one's called a swamp. Can I see? Oh, yeah, we've got some people there. 23 so far. Sarah Shack. G'day, Sarah. How are you? Hi, Ian. Uh, Ann, Ann Tedford. John Bratton. G'day, John. Uh, 1984 Stratus. Hello. Doreen. Uh, Katie Coyne. Check out with your shorts and flip-flops. Uh, here in Scotland, we are wearing about 45. Oh, yeah. We don't call these flip-flops. We call them thongs. It's a thong. We wear thongs here. And I just smashed a fly with one. He got in here and I got him a beauty. Anyway, let's get on to here. I've got my canvas there. It's a 30 centimetre by 40. 42 centimetre and a 12 inch by 16 inch if you want to know the sizes of it, all right? Um, I'm just going to grab a mouthful of me water. I've got me um, coffee ready to go as well. So I'll put that down there. Got me paper towels ready. Got me coffee there. Um, now retarder, where do I put that? There it is right there. If it had teeth, it'll bite me. Okay, I need some brushes. I've got you all the way over there because I'm still setting up and you don't want to have the, the camera just pointing at the canvas and you don't know what I'm bloody doing, do you? You want to know what I'm doing. And I'll tell you what, I've got a, this has gone so tight on me. Um, I'm going to have a few light clouds, so probably a couple of those will do. All right. So I will show you the picture that I'm going to do. So bear with me while I move you over. Oh, the noise of the easel. <clears throat> All right, let's have a look here. What we got? Now I'll zoom in for that. Now I drew this picture out on my, um, there we go there. Gonna have some low atmosphere clouds here in the horizon and the, the gradient sky colors mirroring into the swamp, the lake here with some reeds and some rock and some foliage there okay and we could have a moon so that's what we're going to have there so i'll zoom back out there we go and we'll get you over here for the canvas there we go get that in a good spot uh and i'm gonna 
I'm gonna, I'll try and acknowledge his all as I can if I can, but if not, don't be too threatened. I'm busy painting here. Hello, how are you all, says McGill. Gray Scales is saying hello to Katie. Good on you, Anthony. Um, oh, Sirocco Moro, Oza Brazil Amo, yeah, from Sirocco Silva. Now, come down here to the cam, the, not the canvas, the palette. I always get the palette mixed up with the canvas. All right, so I'm going to use my, uh, how much do I want to do here? About that much there, eh? Good thing about it, if I don't have some left over, I can whack it back in the bottle, but I never do. All right, oh, get there somewhere. Now I've got my retarder, where are we? That's what I use, okay? Uh, Jasonja's retarder medium, it's clear, it looks like baby oil. This slows down the drying time of that acrylic craft student paint. Now that paint, when it's mixed with that onto the canvas, it's going to take longer to dry, all right? And that's where I use my flat two inch synthetic putter on a brush, the brush that's going to put on that paint. So we'll mix all that up. Now hopefully we can get this done in an hour. I'm just thinking in my head the um, way I should paint it, what to paint first, second and third, okay? And with that I'm meaning like, should I paint the sky first and then the water later? Um, I, oh, what do I do, what do I do? I'll paint the, oh, I'll paint, I'll paint the sky first. I've got some tape just on the side of my canvas here because the side of it's foam, compressed foam. And when the paint sticks to that, mainly on the sides, it takes forever to dry and it absorbs into that foam. And I'm always forever taping up the edges. You know what? I've got all bits of <laughs> rubber on the, in the paint here. Look at it. You might see it in the canvas there. What had happened, I had something drawn on this and I used a rubber to rub it out and all the rubber shavings went on the palette. I've swept them up, but I must have left some there. Um, you know, I'm just going to paint the whole damn lot and get on with it. It's a live video. So I'm, I'm mapping in all the canvas. Get rid of that as well. And then we're going to paint the water. So we got that brushed nice and evenly across the canvas left to right. All right. Now I'm going to wipe the white off there. Where's the, there it is. I'm just gonna wipe that off there, like that. Ready for the blue, Mr. Blue. <laughs> Rubbish. The, sh the, the, the shavings from the rubber, you know, when you rub out pencil. All right, so we're gonna use cerulean blue now. So, see what I've done to my canvas up there? I've painted it with the retarded student craft flow paint. Now this paint here, I'm just picking up. No retarder in there, okay. Okay, what do we got there? Uh, I'm just trying to look. I'm just looking at some of the comments there. Uh, All right, anyway, we got here, let's get on with it. So I want the, the color blue at the top and I want to bring it down to a pale in the middle where the horizon line's going to be. Getting all this pushed along, I'll pick up some more and then down the bottom again, massage it into that retarded white paint. There we go and we'll get it quite pale where my horizon line is going to be. I'm just going to even all those brush strokes up now. So I've got a nice realistic blue coloured sky. Massaging it in. 
All right. Now I'm going to pick up some um, titanium white just to lighten up the horizon line there. That's looking a bit pale there. I'll get a bit more in here. Massage it in. There we go. Beautiful. Now we want a little bit of red in the middle of our sky, and I mean a little bit. So I've got a bit of a red colour here. Uh, what is it? It's permanent alinsarin. So I'm going to grab just the littlest bit like that. Let's see if we can scoot. Where's my horizon going to be about here? Something there, just that bit of red in there, okay? In the sky, like that. That'll go to a purple colour. Now you saw how much I put there. It wasn't much at all, was it? It was very little. And it's very faint there, but it's there. Beautiful. All right. I can wash that brush. Now we want to put some clouds in there. So I'm just going to use some good old white. Now I'm using titanium white out of the tube. That's a better pigment than that student paint. A way better pigment. I'm going to use a fan brush to apply them and a blending brush to blend them. Now I want most of my clouds down the horizon line, nothing way up high in the sky. All right, so we're going to load this brush up. Hang on, I've got to remove, some, I've got to stop here for a minute. Let me come here. Sorry about this, these things happen in life. Uh, Where's my mouse? I've got to go to that side. I'm just moving. Where are we? Uh, uh, where are we? There we go. Oh, come on, stop moving. Uh, hide user from this channel. Right, I've got re removed that. Um, Just wait it, bear with me a minute here. <laughs> I'm getting rid of a certain name that was being a, a donkey. Uh, all right, if, if, there's a, if there is a way you can block them from yours, do that, because uh, I can get a bit busy here and it can be a bit hard. Uh, uh, okay, these things happen, but don't let people like that defeat us. Stuff them, I say, stuff them. I might stop what I'm doing at the moment, but we're not, I'm not going to say who they are. You already know who they were. I've got rid of it. Um, if there is another one, whoever, just put the, their name in capital letters, nothing more. Okay, just put their name in capital letters. Let's just say it's a Johnny. Just write Johnny in capital letters, Johnny, or remove Johnny. All right, so now I'm going to have me horizon, let's say about here. So, of course, I wanted that red at the horizon line there. And I'm gonna have those reeds there. So I want some atmospheric clouds. Get them nice and long, like that for instance. Let's put that one there. And we'll blend him. Goodness me, thank you very much, Sarah Shack. She's just made a Super Chat donation. That's really helpful to me. It supports my content very well. Now I'm going to, cause these are on the horizon, I'm gonna blend this bottom half of that cloud down to the horizon. Pretty sure you can see that with your eyes. Okay, beautiful. Down to the horizon. And it might be mixing with that bit of red that we put there as well. Look at that, a beautiful, simple cloud. So bloody easy, eh? Let's put another one there. Uh, I might put another one dingle dangling just in front of it in the middle there and then come up here somewhere just like that. So this one's kind of in front of that one, because I know I'm going to have some land mass here. Wipe your brush as you go with blending, and I'm going to pull the bottom of that one down, and that'll sort of create depth, distance within the middle of our painting. Okay, look at that. I'm, I'm not going to worry about putting shadow colours in these. There we go. Beautiful. 
Brickhouse, thank you very much Brickhouse for your super chat donation, much appreciated. Brickhouse67 and Sarah Shack, you're beautiful, love it. All right, we've got some clouds there. How's that looking? Good. I tell you what, I'm looking on the monitor. That red looks very bright in the monitor, but in real life, it's not that bad. Now, I'm picking up some more white, and I might put, let's say, something with a bum on it now, maybe a bit of a cloud here. This one's going to have a bum on it because it's over our head, okay? So something about there. And what I mean by a bum on it, this here, I don't want to blend down. See how I blend the bottom of that one down to oblivion? I don't want to do that to this one. I want to keep a bum on it. Where are we? So let's see if we can blend it reasonably level and flat, and then a bit more level and flat here, and then just turmoil the rest of it up into the sky like that. Turmoil up, get that brush. Look at that nice cloud. And have we got enough to do? Maybe just a little bit over here somewhere, just something up here. Just stamp it on any old way. That'll do. Same again. Blend it, if anything, keep a bum on it, because these high clouds, if anything, are coming over our head. I'm stabbing, twisting, turmoiling that cloud. Beautiful quality paint. Work out what blending brush is gonna work for you, whether it's a mop brush, a hardware brush, flat brush, whatever. You need to find out what's gonna work for you. There we go, it looks a bit square like a brick. I'll just distort some of that. Too easy, there we go. Now, it's all pretty much the one tone. I'm cleaning that brush out, okay, just so it's got no contamination in it. Oh, I just bumped my coffee, so I better remember to drink that. And I'm picking up some more white. And I'd say this one, I wanna add some yumminess in there. And this one here, maybe some yumminess in there like that. Okay, that brush is finished with and as you all know, people that follow me, you just sit that yumminess down a little bit, leaving the vibrancy, brightness of it there, and it just gives that cloud a little bit of dimension and 3D effect coming at you. Okay, there we go, that'll do. Quite beautiful clouds they are. Alrighty, um, in the picture there, we have a um, round orb down here. I've got me... I'm so happy, I, I finally found a container for all me um, cat attack sponge, uh, all me um, pounces there, and all the lids, I was too reluctant to throw them out, I thought, they might come in handy for something. Uh, what size circle, I don't want something massive, it's not a mythical painting, so we'll use that size. It's pretty much a realistic one. So now you've got a cloud here and there. It looks a bit dumb, so I'm going to put this one up there to even it out. So we better put a little bit more paint there. Uh, this could be a moon or just the sun glaring in the sky. It is what it is. Okay, so I'll get that coloured up with some white. And it doesn't have to be big, thick, solid white either. Talk amongst yourself if you can. When I'm painting live, it is a bit difficult for me to acknowledge you because I've got my canvas here. I've got my display screen over there that I'm referencing from, and I have used down here. Um, I do my best to keep an eye on everything, but it is a bit hard when you're painting live. Just painting live in itself is a, is a scary feat. Ooh. But anyway, I'll get by. And it's a bit difficult to acknowledge everybody as I'm painting. So I'm putting that on there and seeing how it's going to look. What do we reckon? How's that look? Get your hand out of the way, Ian. How's that look in the monitor? That's not too bad. I might give it a little bit of a twist. Yeah, that'll do. That's good enough. It is what it is. Whether it's the moon, whether it's the sun, whether it's whatever. Okay, now what I would like to do is grab a soft fan brush. I did this in the um, the digital reference picture when I painted it on the digital program. So I'm gonna see if it works on an actual painting. I don't think it do, but I'm gonna give it a go. I'll, I'll learn from it. So I've got a soft, I've got a soft fan brush. Okay. Now I might wreck it here, let's hope I don't. Oh, I've got some scratches in the blue there. I'm gonna 
just get rid of them with this white paint. Now we want to just sort of put them in front of it there, just like that. That's all I wanted to do. And if I've stuffed it, well, I've learnt not to do that again. And you'll know if you copy this tutorial not to do this bit, but it's not too bad. I had some nice heavy scratch marks from that yellow brush into this blue, so I'm using it to hide them. They are what they are. That'll do. Better than a poke in the eye with a blunt stick, I say. Alrighty, let's see, what have we got there? Uh, stupid phone blending clouds. Stupid phone blending clouds. Uh, soft brush works for blending. Okay, everyone's talking about brushes there. Alrighty, good stuff. Okay, um, I've got to keep working here. Um, my horizon is pretty much, is my camera on the painting? Yes, is pretty much here. Okay, that's where the horizon is. Um, I want some greens now to put in the water. So I'm, I've got, um, forest green and I'm going to use a yellow green and we also going to need a pull down brush and some black as well and some brown okay so there's the the black alrighty and I've got two burn numbers here because I'm trying to use up the empty tubes okay there's still a little bit more in that one. I'll put that one away. Um, so I want to pretty much get a level horizon line on there. Uh, where's a flat brush? I'm dampening a flat brush with the black. So now I've got to remember to move the camera, otherwise you'll all be saying, hey, and we can't see what you're doing. Now in me reference picture, this is just to get the level straight of the horizon there and about there. And idiot me, that pencil mark that I put there, you can bloody see it. So what I've got to do is grab a smaller brush with some of the whitey blue on it. And let's see if I can just disturb that. A bit. That'll do. Fixed it up. All right, so we want this to be black. I'm going to use my flat tongue filbert. I've, I don't know why I use that flat one. I just picked it up by habit. Now, we want to come along and map in the top nothing's dry yet of the bushland whatever it is at the swamp okay there i love the filbert for this it makes beautiful canopy tops for the foliage and this dark will act as the depth within and once we get it done we can dry it to get the different layers done now, it's, I'm being careful because it's going to want to mix with that wet blue underneath. So what I'm going to do, I'm just slowly damp it in first, quickly move along here. So I've got it reasonably level. That's the levelness for the... Now, I just want to mirror that. So I'll start with this one, just about there, keeping it about... It doesn't have to be exact but because the water's blurry, okay? Now I'm going to wipe that brush, and when I say wipe, I'm going to wipe the living buggery out of it, get it all off there, just so as I can gently pull that down with this brush. I don't want to use a big fat one and pull it way down there because it's going to look a bit unrealistic. There we go. Too easy, wipe that. Uh, block in the bottom of this one now, so it's pretty much mirror imaging the top.
top shape there. Block it in any old way. And this will make, with a bit of luck, this water's going to look like real mirrory, shiny, flat, beautiful water. Now, like I did before, wipe the living buggery out of it. Why I say living buggery? Because you don't want nothing left in there, see? And that helps to get this pull down controlled. If it was still full of paint, you're not going to pull it down as well as you would like it to. And you'll think, how come they do it on TV better than me? And it's just because you're just not knowing everything. Once you know everything, you can do anything. There we go. We've got that. Now I've got to dry that. I'm just looking for more reflections that I don't need. No, I do want to put the reeds in first so as I can dry that water. Okay, so I'm going to grab my flathead brush and I'm going to use a dark green. So I'm just going to wet the brush and get the dark green. Maybe a bit of black in there as well. There we go. Now this, you just, you're going to do both sides at once. All right. How are you all going there? I can see some names. Denise, Mary, Rotondi, uh, Sarah, Mary, Jamie, Mary. Oh, there's a few Marys there, or if it's the one Mary I've seen. Now I want some about here. So what I'm going to do, let's get that up there like that. Let's hope that's wet enough. No, it's not wet enough. I need it more wet. Well, let's just let me turn the aircon on in here. It's getting very muggy. Two seconds. All right. See, I'm testing it on the side of my board there. I don't know if you saw that. Because you don't want it breaking up. You want it, see how the first one went? I want it nice. It's still a little bit dry, so I'm adding more water to it. Oh yeah, beautiful. Now I want a bit here, so I'm gonna do the bit above the water and then the bit of below the water, okay? So that's what I'm doing. There's the water here, boom, where that line is, okay? So I want, and while it's still wet, I'll show you what I wanna do. I want, see I don't want them broken up like that. Try and get the, I'm going to grab a flat brush. The bottom, roughly where the water is, we want to pull that. It's still, ugh, that didn't work too good. <laughs> Camera's in the way, that looks like snot. I'll do it again. Put some here. Okay. Come on, hit the canvas, you bugger. There we go. I'll get some just there. Now I want some maybe here. I'm going to wet her again, wet her up a bit. Okay. Something out there like that. I'll try this one a different way. Where's the water about here? So I'm just going to stamp this on because that water is still very wet and I just want to blur each bit of reed there instead of doing what I did there. First time I'm doing this so I'm learning as I go on this little procedure here. But this is just blurring that reflection in the swamp and I think that worked a bit better. So now I can fix this one up, come out here a bit, just so it looks a bit more 
artistically better. I'm using the corner of this flat just to manipulate the reflection left and right, if anything. I stuffed up a beauty there, eh, didn't I, eh? Oh well, that's looking like a reflection. All right, and I've got one more on the other side. Meanwhile, this black's still drying a bit. We've got one just about here. Come on, get in there. So this colour that I'm using is the forest green with a bit of black mixed with it, okay? That's why I'm getting this tone and colour. And the good thing I like about that Procreate program I got in my iPhone and my iPad, it helps me work out what colours are going to work with each other when I'm designing a reference picture. Because originally when I did this picture in the program there, I was making the water a swampy green colour, but it just didn't suit the temperament of the sky. And I was able just to rub it out and start again and try a reflection of the sky there. There we go, that's looking all right, I think. How's that looking in the monitor? Fine. It's looking all right in the monitor. Is there anything there? Mm. Okay, good stuff. Uh, where are we up to now? Now, what I want to do is dry that landmass out there so as I can get the greens on there. If I try painting the green on it when it's wet, I'm going to have a one hell of a time, a real bad time trying to get it done. to get a bit more depth in here it's just not dark enough just on the top half there it's gone a bit rubbery come on and then I can dry this off now with shrubs and bushes I'll show you when I'm coloring this in it's important to keep some blacks where they lay and I'll show you why All right, I pretty much can paint over that. I think it's dry enough. I better drink some of my coffee before it goes cold. Oh yeah. Now I'm gonna go back to that, um, the same brush I used to put that color on there. I'm gonna go back to that, where is it? That flat tongued, that flat filbert cat tongue type of brush. So I'm just washing it out here drying it and we need to start I'll get this water this paint a bit wet I like to start with the forest green it's the darker of the two if you can help it when you're learning to paint until you start understanding your greens try not to brighten them with white because you can mute it I've done that in my early days and it just gives it that wrong look if you've got to brighten it try and use a yellow all right. So we want to get, I'll start from the tops here. Some of it can dribble over the black. Now I want just the littlest bit of yellow green. I've just put the littlest bit of yellow green in with that because it's a bit too dark and we should see some, yeah, here we go. bit more water on there and I'm making these leaning in towards the middle umbrella shape types of green here okay get a bit more yellow green within that it's just not quite enough there we go 
Now I, I like to leave where the horizon line is a bit of dark there. Don't bring this all the way down to the bottom. Okay, a bit of dark there. Now we just transfer those colours with the right gaps if we can get it. Just scratch it down and put a few on, scratch them down. Put a few on, scratch them down. A few on and scratch them down. Get some more on your brush. So you've got still showing the blacks and it's showing this green. Okay, good. Now we'll go to the other side and do the same there. Where's my horizon line? There it is. I want to remember to leave some black in there. I just like using this flat filbert for these. It makes beautiful distant foliage and canopies. And we'll do the bottom as well. I'm literally just putting it on and pulling it down. You'll be surprised how good it makes the reflections look. It's such an easy procedure to do. Leaving bits of the black everywhere. Okay, we'll give that a quick dry, just so it's not going to mud up. Alright, I think that's dry enough. Now I need to wash that brush. Uh, sorry Ian, so busy, enjoyed the chat, forgot to scroll up. See you painting lol, your group is full of lovely people. Thank you very much, who said that one? Katie Coyne. Thank you very much Katie Coyne for that feedback. <coughs> Alright, so I've got my yellow green here. And also, like I said, where are we? bit of yellow. If you feel you want to brighten a green up, use a bit of yellow. So I'll put some yellow on the board as well, just in case. I'll see how this will go. Now this is a flow yellow green out of the tube. It's softer body, so I'm not adding water to this. And we'll start over here now, and we want to get this leaving the dark. So this is going to pretty much make the shape of our um, trees there. And it's going to just dribble over that dark area. The more you look at these kind of shapes in the trees on the side of the road and that, the more you get a feel of how they look and you can transfer that behaviour onto your canvas. Okay, now we're going to do the same again. Well, I'm loading the brush up, just getting those yellow green colours and trying to f and pull it down. Just like that. Now we'll come across to the other side. I want to put a bit of yellow, I'm putting a bit of um, cad yellow light with that just to, I'll do the other side a bit different, see how it looks. Because that yellow green that I used, the flow one, is very opaque type. Dribble some of it over the dark.
over that dark band you're left right close to the horizon line dribble some over that to create shadow and depth underneath the bush okay and once again we'll pull this down into the water How's that looking? I want this one. Now I'm going to pick up some of the cad yellow, mix with it a bit more, because I want some of that a bit brighter. It's looking a bit dark over there. So just probably a bit filtering in in just one area. I might just do like here, radiating with some light hitting it there. Boom. And then we'll transfer that. Get off there, your little hair. We'll transfer that, oh golly. That brighter value in the reflection as well. Yeah, I want a little bit more, probably. Just looking in the monitor, yep, maybe here. Coming over this bit. Lots of fun doing this. Adding different values in the reflection makes it more unique. Okay, looking good, looking good, yes. Okay, I need a little bit more brighter over here. I'm just being fussy now. Now you can mix some um, black and yellow together to get a, um, I'll just do a bit here. I'm oh, not black and yellow, the, the burn umber, which I've got on my table there, and the green, I mean the yellow, see here, it's gonna make a bit of a, a green. Um, it makes that dead, you know, the dead foliage color within your canopies. When this is added in there, it just adds that real realistic look to it. It gives it that 100% bullshit effect to your foliage. Now we've got yellows and greens there. Okay, it's looking good. You're happy with that, but once you start knowing where to add this, this is the dead stick colours. Um, this is only a small body of it here, so it's probably not going to be a good example, but I'm putting it here anyway. This just adds that bit more of a realism. Normally if you look at trees, you'll see the dead brown within them. Okay, then you'll know what Ian was on about in that live video. But that's all I'll do anyway. I hope I didn't bugger that up. How's that look? Yeah, you can see the difference what it's done. Get rid of those. I've got some... <clears throat> How do I get rid of them? Well, they go that way. I'm trying to get rid of the, um, oh no, excuse me a minute, I'm just trying to get rid of the messages off the screen, because I can't see, oh uh, no, not that one, oh there we go, oh no, no, cancel, I've lost my screen now, uh. okay, alright, uh, we want some rocks in here, so I'm just going to quickly wash that brush, uh, what do we got there? Not sure it will allow me to type it, Sarah Shack. So not sure what she's on about there. Okay, now, um, in me reference picture there, I want to get some kind of rocks at the front and we want to get all this mirror reflection in the water. We'll do that first before we put the rocks in. Nearly forgot about that. 
So we want a beautiful flat brush. Um, I had one that I dirtied up, which I would like to use again. So just let me find that, here we go. And we want the blue that we had, which is here, is it still there or is it dying? Okay, we've got that, we've saved that. I should have sprayed it. We need that blue and we need the white. So what we're going to do, I'll put some more white on the board. Oh, I just saw my coffee there, it's making me thirsty. What are we, 45 minutes? Come on Ian, let's get this going. So we'll get some white. Can you see that? Yeah. Where are we? Yeah. I want some white. Now it's tainted with a bit of blue, which is what we want. Put it on there, I'm wiping the brush, the brush is damp. And I want to turn it into a pale film. See what I did there? Get that straight, you dag. There we go. We've turned it into a pale film. I'm going to do the other one. I don't, I don't want too much on the brush. I want very little on the brush. I'm going to use my bullshit stick just to get that going along there nice and level. Oh, yeah, beautiful, my brother. There we go. Look at that. Put the stick up. And we want to sink a lot of these reflection down. Now, do it kind of on the edge there, as thin as possible. Kind of scatter it, cross bond them all. Don't have them too thick if you can help it. You want them nice and thin and ununiformed, okay? And some of this white you, you scallop it out into the blue and let it participate and fade just like that. I hope the camera's picking this up. I might zoom in a bit so you can think, oh, good, he zoomed in. See what it's doing there? I'm going to pick up some more. It's very hard with the camera over your shoulder, but I'm doing my best. Get some all out here. You mainly join the edge of the reflection with these scallops. Get a bit more, do the same over here. It's very gingerly touching it. Now they're all looking the same size with that big blob on the end, so I'm gonna destroy that look if I can. There we go. And get some in here. Cause see that one there, it's gone pale, which is what I wanted it to do. Golly, a big fat one there. <laughs> All right, I'm going to wipe the brush and get rid of some of these fat ones if I can. Oh man, I'm just making it more fatter. Help me, help me. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh. oh, now I'm really buggering it up. If your painting's going to start dying on you, it'll die all the way. All right, so I'll just grab the... reflection colour and put back too easy huh? and I could fix that up 
Yeah, that's fine, that's fine. I'll give it a try. All right, let's get back into it. Bit of um, white again. This will sink all that repairing back down into the water. Now I need some of this white out here scalloped. It'd be nice if I can just rest on a table. And we also need to not to forget, sink down these bits as well. Are they in the shot? Yep. There's water movement at the base of them, so that's what creates all this white. Just remember all my tutorial paintings that I do are all for sale there. There'll be a link in the description below if you're watching the repeat, the replay of this live, and there's, you can see just what's available for sale. All right, I think we can whack in the rocks now. How are we going there? I better zoom out. <clears throat> okay. Now I've got the pretty much the burnt umber. I'm going to map in for the rocks. Okay. So I'm just getting that on my brush, and I want one pretty much here coming up, and I want the water coming towards us. I accidentally made it look like that in my reference picture and I thought it looks good. It gives more realism and depth to the actual picture. So that's why I want, want it to be like that. So I'm going to get this mapped on here. I will put some black in it and then just highlight it. It's that simple. And we'll get another one pretty much coming off the painting. This one's a bit more structured. Okay, and I can block that in. Tell you what, going live, you don't get a chance to turn the camera off. You just got to keep going like a bull at a gate. Well, I suppose it gives you an idea because a lot of people ask, how long does it take you to do a painting? You get an idea in this, how long it'll take if I didn't have to worry about the camera. Could probably be done a little bit quicker than real time in the live, I suppose. Now this is going to be blow dried so as the other colours will stick to it. And that's why I did those white reflective lines first so as they sit behind these rocks properly. I'm glad I did the water with the sky. All right, I'm going to dry that. Have a mouthful of my coffee while I'm waiting. All right, that's good enough. Now we need some depth, some darkness. So I'm just gonna get the straight black. I've got the camera left on there. Yeah, I'm just picking up the black. And I want the bottoms of the rock where it's meeting the water. I want that black, dark. Okay, so I'm just sort of pulling it up, hoping for the best here. I 
Okay. And then we'll just feel where darker bits might be within the rock. I'm just feeling, oh, I reckon somewhere like that. I'm going to wipe the buggery out of that brush and then scrumble some of that into this brown just so it's not stark and bodgy looking. Get some of that bottom pulled up as well. Okay, that's looking good. It's, the rock's got depth to it now. And then the same on the other side. We're going to give it some darker values. Wipe the brush and then just scrumble all that into that burnt umber brown colour. Okay, and then we'll just give it some kisses of light hitting the top of it. We'll kiss it with some light and then we'll put some water around the base of it to make it look happy. Um, I'm just going to grab some white with that brown and just see if that's going to, yeah, that'll do me job. But my brush is too wet. There we go. Come on, get some brown and white. I can show you what I'm doing here. I've got some of the burn umber and the white. Just mixing up a value there. Okay, excuse me. Just burped. I burped my wheat bix. I had wheat bix this morning and I just can taste them in my burp. <laughs> Not a bad burp actually. Some burps are horrible tasting, but a wheat bix aren't too bad. Alrighty. Oh, thank you very much, Sarah Shack, for your super chat donation there. I just saw that go up. You can't miss them, they're big and colourful. Now I'm just I put my camera up there. Yes, I did. I'm just hitting this, leaving the blacks there. How's that looking? Let me look in the monitor. Reasonable. It looks a bit machine made, patterny, not really. So I'm going to merge that a bit. Play with your rocks. They don't have to be done as quick as the person showing you did them. I'm going to pick up some black and destroy it off my brush and put some more black within there just to get rid of that. You saw how that light colour looked, it just looked too patterny. Let me see there. That's a little bit better, all right? I'm happy with that. So we'll do the same on here. Wipe the brush. And scramble some of that back. Leaving that light there, subtle but there. There we go. Is that looking in the monitor? Fine, fine, fine. Now I want to get the water just kissing around the edge of those rocks. So we're picking up, I've cleaned that same brush. We're picking up that white again that's tainted with a little bit of the blue. Very carefully. And we just want to gingerly get some water value just around there, in here. Keep them, keep these all level. And some bit behind there. And the water hitting this one as well. Kind of sits them down, makes them look like they're meant to be there. I want to have a look in the monitor and see what's missing. A little bit more brighter there. It's very, it looks, you can see it in the real life, but I don't know, the camera wasn't quite picking it up, so I'm painting it for the camera's sake, which I shouldn't really be doing, because not everyone's going to be looking at the painting through a camera. All right, Could probably have some dribbling down the rock. Ah. 
That's all right. That's all right. Oh, wrong way, wrong way. Oh, how's it going, says Lisa. Happy to be seen. Thank you very much, Lisa, for your super chat donation there. Those that don't know what a super chat, those donations going up, there's a grey dollar sign where you write your chats. You hit that and follow the prompts, and that's how avid followers and supporters of mine send these donations through. All right, we've done now. I could probably still carry on with the cows and get some more darkness in here and then probably get some more light hitting it as well if I want. I'm going to pick up my script liner now. I'll put a signature about here. I'm going to do a nice tidy little black one. Nice tidy dark signature right there in the water. Then we'll whack a frame on it eh, and see how she looks. All right, let's go down here. And then like I said, check out the links in the description below. All my paintings are for sale. At this stage, they're 74 US dollars, and that includes all shipping, handling, and fees to get that painting to your door, okay? And they come with a personalized autograph photo of me with your painting that you purchased, and that's something else you can always print out and stick to the back of the painting or even put that on the wall as its own piece as well. Just of me acknowledging you as the purchaser of that painting. Something unique. All right, we've got a bit of a signature there. Cracker box, it's over. Really good job, Ian. Brilliant to talk to everyone. Great chat, Katie Coyne. You're welcome, Katie Coyne. Okay, let's, I'll get to take this tape off the edge there. The side of me, um, Painting hasn't got wet paint on it. All right, now I'll whack a frame on this and just see how she looks, and I'll say hello to everybody. <sighs> Look at that, eh? That's not too shabby, is it? Let's get on here. It's a nice wall painting, something a beginner can learn. Practice what I just showed you here, and believe me, you can do that. You really can. It was that easy, and look what you can get out of it, okay? So, I hope you enjoyed that. Let's go over here. Oh, where are we? <clears throat> All right, I, yeah, like I said, I hope you enjoyed that. I will put the colors in the link in the description below what colors I've used. Um, Sarah Shack, cyber hugs and kisses to you and everybody else, I think, that sent a donation, I forget the names now, but thank you very much for that. Um, I can draw well, but I'm afraid still to draw with a brush. Lisa, happy to be seen. Don't worry about it, I was an avid drawer with pencils all my life and I only started painting with colors and a brush, I think it was 2012. And everyone's a beginner, you learn, you make mistakes and you learn from your mistakes. And you just practice more procedures and subjects. The more you practice them, the more better in your mind and to others you become. Okay? Like I said, you can do it. You should see some of the frustrated paintings I did when I first started. I was so frustrated. But, you know, you, the more you put into something, the more you get out of it. And the more you inspire people, well, then you know you're doing something right and it's not just a bullshit, oh, yeah, it looks good. They really like it, okay? And it's satisfying. Uh, there's, there's so much you can do to a painting like this, but that's all I'm keeping it for a beginner. You can move, look at something like this and or if it's something you've done and move objects around so they don't look too uniform, say, with your cloud layout. I'm always trying to create a sky now so it looks like it's coming over our heads. Where in my early days they were quite flat. A lot of beginners can get learn to paint clouds where they look flat. That's fine, but the more you go through your journey, the more you can learn how to bring them over your head. Okay, it's not too hard. It's just learning and practicing more. Okay, what have we got here? Yeah, the bullshit stick, Sarah. Um, hi, Tony. Tony. Um, 
One more for the road. Thanks, Ian. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, hello, Tony. Good night, Cracker Box. And hello, Ian. Is Denise Vallejo. All right, I think I'll wrap it up. That's pretty much it. What have we been going for? 65 minutes, so we got it just within an hour. It's dribbled over an hour with my uh, outro talking here, but that's not to worry. Um, if you like what I'm doing, be sure to tell your friends and family. But if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody, all right? All the best, goodbye, good luck, and bloody good on you. Now I'll just go behind the camera here and say it's Uru from The Guru.